Hi everyone. Sorry a bit for the lateness. I just had to get a bit ready. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be having a clash for all the ages in the latest episode of Socium Ball Z, the Protsky saga. I'll be facing off against Timo Protsky about the two uh, big schools of socionics, which are um, the bees knees and so on YouTube in the modern day, and that is modern socionics from the Archetype Center, and of course, um, plain old World Socionic Society socionics. So, what I'd like to talk to you about, Tim, are perhaps a few things. So, this is following, for a bit of context for people, um, my typing video on your channel, where you and your, your partner were able to type me as an SLE in your system. That's right. And I know that has caused a certain amount of controversy, at least on my group. There yeah. have been there have been memes, there have been um, um, many posts in jest. There have been some less than respectful comments as well, which I do not condone. Um, I think what this typing has enabled, which I think is a good thing, is to really show up the differences perhaps between our approaches to typing and maybe today we can sort of go through some of those see what sorts of um we'll see if we can reconcile some of those differences okay. and i think i and i sent you a few questions beforehand Let me talk about them today one thing i'd really like to understand more from you and i know that a lot of people who have watched the process both for me and also for my friend cat is exactly how the semantic methodology works. For people who don't know, the semantic methodology is one which is primarily used by Timur and other people at Archetype Center to work out type. So what I really like to do is maybe go through some e examples where what is said in the video is then converted into an analysis for a typing, for the placement of a different information metabolism element in a certain function. Uh, yes, it's a very wide question but I'll try to explain it in short way. Uh, you know, first of all, I'm very glad that the typing inspired so much discussions in your group and those arguments. I, <laughs> I looked at that arguments and it was like I went back to 2011 when I used to take part in such socionics battles when everyone was arguing and um, telling that, no, this is that type, no, definitely not, this is absolutely rubbish, and so on. <laughs> it was really funny, and I have really even f forgot about how, how that happens, and this was like a, remin uh, like a remembrance from my past. So, uh, the main thing that I would like to say, uh, uh, first of all, we would like, we talked with you about the psychosophia, but I think that topic is going to the second position or third. First of all, we mm. shall talk about semantics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm, you know, I noticed, uh, I analyzed everything that you wrote to me when we discussed our um, discussed your typing, and it is really interesting because I see what elements I mostly see, as far as I understand now, what elements and what. Uh, Mm, what uh, traits do you see as a significant as a signification of this or that function or type or even quadra? And I think that, for example, you wrote about black intuition that you gave uh, several definitions of uh, terms, and you interpret that uh, like it's a strong black intuition, uh, mm -hmm. but. In our methodology, I would say that it was only a sign of processing logic and giving mm -hmm. a, a number of definition. It's it's not a sign of strong intuition. It is not connected with intuition at all in, in our methodology. Mm -hmm. The main thing, uh, when, when we are analyzing the whole video, when we look at the answers that uh, a person gives, we look if this person is from central quadras or periphery quadras. That is one of the main uh, things that we are looking at because it, it really helps to distinguish uh, beta gamma from delta alpha. We consider this one of the most significant uh, traits 
Uh, the second thing, we always uh, look at major dichotomies, logic, ethics, sensory intuition, and only after that steps we look what actually uh, functions uh, do we hear. So when we typed you, we, we first of all revealed that you are from central quadras, and you, that you are some uh, you have logical type and mo most likely extroverted logical type this was my initial hypothesis even when we socialized with you in december i had four mm. versions about you that you might be someone extroverted and logical and nothing mm. nothing more because i didn't have enough information to make any conclusions about your type uh, so mm. when we watched your video we decided that you are maybe SLE, or maybe uh, Jack London, logical mm. intuitive, because extroverted logic from central quadras, there are only two of them. Uh, what, uh, what was the final uh, solution? We found out that when you describe, for example, pictures, pictures is not a, a crucial moment in typing. It is a check, because when you are when you have answered all the questions and when you came up to, to to the pictures we already have final version and pictures are helping just to to check our final version and pictures also show uh, very good logic and ethics to uh, they help to distinguish those dichotomies for example your video and video of cat are different significantly from the point of view of logic and ethics um, because everywhere where people are or uh, characters uh, present uh, present on the pictures a cat gave much more ethical information than you so it's yes. quite obvious where we see logical type or ethical types so pictures just uh, help to prove that one more time but uh, in general when we uh, listen to your answers every ethical questions were quite <laughs> not very interesting to you not very uh, large in details when you spoke about your relations with other people, your answers mm. were scarce. You are not very interested in characters of people around you. You just described a little what are their behavior and nothing more. You do not support any social relations. You are not interested in keeping some deep friendship and so on, like white ethics do, for example. Mm. So we didn't find any white ethics, not in your values, not in your strong functions. So it was one of the arguments, uh, why did we exclude the version logical intuitive extrovert Jack London, because he's from Gamma and Gamma has white ethics as a valued aspect. So uh, the, next, uh, the next point is uh, the interpretation of pictures. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, ask you, you tell that you manifested black intuition in pictures number and there was a row of pictures. What do you consider as black intuition in the interpretation of pictures? That well, I would, have, I would have thought that black intuition would have been about speculation on what this could be about. What are the ideas which the artist is trying to put forward rather than just focusing on what is in the picture? It makes sense. What is it meant? To, what, what, what could it possibly mean? What could it possibly be pointing at? And that's what I, I know I didn't do that in all of the paintings because mm -hmm. i thought that some of them didn't really call for it or even when they did i'd say that the amount of interpretation needed was limited by the constraints of what was actually in that picture a good example was for instance looking at um yes so for instance if you look at uh, the example of the people sitting at that reading literature Mm -hmm. Now, the area of speculation I would see for that is the, the main focus, which is the literature being read. What is being read and why is it being read? And speculating on what that could be, to me, would have been more of a black intuition approach. Um, whereas, for instance, if we take, say, the example which people gave of a lots of black sensation, which I think is a fair point about um, what turned out to be the... Um, the first day of Pompeii, of Vesuvius erupting in Pompeii. Mm -hmm. I would say that I think it's very hard not to ignore the fact that people are engaging in all sorts of debauchery and sin and that the what well, later after I found it was actually a vol volcanic eruption of Vesuvius. It was made to look like almost a divine punishment and the idea of focusing on the fact that people were doing bad things, being punished for it. 
I think that noting that there was there was sort of almost violent acts going on, the, lo the looting of buildings, uh, people lying dead on the floor, etc. I mm -hmm. think it's very hard for even a black intuitive uh, type to ignore that. But it's that I then went to explore, okay, why is this? What's going on? What could it be? What is the reason for this? I think that could have been at least intuition. Whether it's white or black is perhaps something which is to be explored. I should also say that when I was looking for this, my past experiences also played a major role in this. For instance, I'm used to seeing in neoclassical um, neoclassical paintings, the message behind things are usually constrained by either something to do with God or something to do with um, Greek mythology. And, and there's usually some sort of moral message behind it. So I knew already from looking at that, what sorts of things to be looking for, where I should be speculating. And what I wouldn't have done was to go too wild in my speculations, because I don't think that would have been what the artist would have wanted. Mm. So in those sorts of ways, I think I was speculating. Also with the tree, you know, the big tree with a sort of floating orb in the center. Now, or I was thinking I was tapping into sim in the symbolism of that. And I think that was intuition. It could have also been pointing to some white intuition, I think, as well, in that I was looking at what does this represent? What do these Re reoccurring themes and I'm used to seeing these themes in different books and literature and other kinds of artworks so I knew already what it was referencing and what it was appealing to so I think there were plenty of aspects where the intuition came out but yes I also do think that there was a um, black sensation what I didn't see was a consistency of black sensation occurring throughout all the questions and certainly lots of these paintings I wasn't really talking about or bringing in black sensation in, in a way which is more than what I did, thought was necessary to the situation. Like, for instance, the example of the people sitting around, they just hunted uh, some animals and having a story. I, d I didn't see where black sensation would really come into that. It was more of a, you know, a funny chat. Someone's telling a funny story and they're sort of enjoying those surroundings. And you see the guy sort of sitting back. He's got his hands in the air, he's gesticulating with his big face. And I'm not sure where... I don't see where the relevance of black sensation would be. But I'm thinking if I were looking at these paintings, I'm thinking for each one, employ a bit of item response theory. The idea that each item in the test has a certain benchmark for where people approach it. And then you look at individual scores based on how they go above or below the benchmark. And I think each particular painting should have a different benchmark in terms of, OK, yes, I would expect almost anyone to mention some black sensation in this particular painting. But there's also quite interesting, quite a bit of speculation here as well, which could be black intuition. Or in a seemingly calm painting, in a seemingly um, harmonious painting, they're really trying to insert quite a lot of sort of more rougher, more fighty elements. And so that's where I was thinking, you know, was I just in those elements of black sensation, just adhering to what the normal benchmark would be? Or was I going above and beyond that? And I think a lot of the questions as well say about politics, about um, how the country should be run. It's already implying, I'm, in my opinion, more black sensation than, say, white sensation. Um, you yourself say that a lot of the, the um, very few white sensation valuing types, very few peripheral quadras go into politics. But the questions were talking quite a bit about how the world is run. Now, I happen to be quite politically aware. I'm a, I'm, I happen to be well educated in a, quite a broad number it's of subjects. Accidental. We believe that it's not accidental. It has relation to yeah. social type. So you know, uh, your your uh, your thoughts are very justified because uh, mm. if a person looks at our methodology, uh, he or she can think that I'm talking about this or that aspect because it is in the uh, question itself or because it mm. is in the picture and so on. But it doesn't work like that, you know. When even if we show a picture where the ships are fighting with the sea, where there is a storm and they're cracking on the uh, on each other, and one uh, one ship is already sunk and others are breaking just in the moment, if we look at the descriptions that are given by Black Intuits, by Huxley, by Don Quixote, or by Robespierre, they manage not to mention Black sensation at all that that is that is the fix the the thing you know and we if we are for example if we are showing a picture that does not um, contain some black sensation 
in a literal way like those hunters for example they're having a rest mm -hmm. and nothing more so here we are just looking at the general dichotomy intuition and sensation we don't pay attention to what color of sensation or what color of intuition do we hear uh, right in the description of this picture we are mostly interested of all the pictures what is the balance do we hear most sensation or do we hear most intuition and later we're just looking at the color of that sensation or intuition so if for example there is a person who has strong black sensation and we are showing to him a picture that does not contain any fight war or something like that just those hunters that i have in the rest black sensation is all is only a sensation uh, it's a function that des describes real objects of the real world and their correct objective characteristics and nothing more and th that's all black sensation it's about real objects if they are fighting or clashing or something like that black sensation can all and can as well describe this for example this man is going to struck this man uh, this object is going to blow out or this army is going to attack that army but it's not necessary that black sensation is being manifested like that if we are showing a picture about uh, hunters and we, if we hear only sensation from a person so our uh, our th thought that in this picture we are hearing sensation and let's go further let's go listen to other pictures so it's not necessary that uh, there should be something about war and conflict we we can also we can only hear sensation and have the final result that this is a sensation type with taking into account all the other traits so in which case what sorts of things would those who you have typed as black intuition those you type don quixote and huxley what would they have been saying when they're presented say with that scene in um in pompeii you what know sort of, what does it look like uh you know we have on our channel only one so far only one video in english interview of a woman from the united states and she's huxley she's black into it and she managed to avoid all the black sensation descriptions while she uh, was describing those pictures so it's very interesting you know uh, i am joking mm -hmm. we with catherine are often joking when we are listening to black intuits when they describe in those pictures if we haven't seen those pictures we will never understand what are they describing right now so the mm. level of abstract uh, that black intuits have is so symbolic so metaphoric that it goes very far away from what is depicted there and on the contrary if we are listening to a sensory type he does not go far from what is actually depicted there just like your questioner so when we watched your descriptions of pictures you did not go to go very far from what is depicted you get some speculations you try to uh, exp um, to give some meanings of that but it was not a high level of, of abstraction that we couldn't understand what are you describing so it was very close to reality right, right i see so but that seems to be quite a high bar if you forgive me for saying so it seems to me that then to be intuitive you can't really communicate about things in a way which people are actually going to understand from being around you or at least you wouldn't choose to and at least from what i know from say growing up i've always found it's been a very sort of difficult thing to do i don't think i would have gotten very far in university writing a particular paper if i if i couldn't relate things back to something more common and set and something which i think is very important is to relate things to some sort of shared objectivity before i can then go into speculation otherwise i think that i'll just ending up end up losing people and i can't get my point across to people and so one thing i'm wondering and sort of what my my hunch was about the process is perhaps as you said only one person so far is has been able to come out as some sort of black intuition type and i'm wondering maybe then the bar is perhaps a bit too high you said for you said uh, it's just now that there was a little bit of speculation and that a little bit of speculation is enough to say that okay that's not enough to make you an intuitor it's rather that a little bit of intuition is allowed but when it comes to an intuitor any sensation is not allowed and so it's almost as if the bar 
is very, very high to become an intuitor and actually rather low to be listed as a sensor. Does that does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. And for example, if we supposed, for example, about you, if we supposed mm -hmm. London, so we should we could find uh, we should and could find some intuition in description of your pictures the pictures and any element of the questionnaire is not the final only if we have a, a whole row which has no contradictions with each other only this can allow us to give a final conclusion about this or that type there is a very huge range of how intuition and sensation can be uh, manifested at different people but we should always look at the whole what has been speak spoken about and if we heard black sensation over the questionnaire if, if we see some logical type with black sensation from central quadras we should rely on every other aspect that can help us to make the final conclusion so if we for example looked almost till the end your questionnaire and we suppose that this must be an extrovert from beta with black sensing basic and we hear only sensing in the pictures so our final conclusion is far is quite obvious but for example if we heard not the values of beta quadra not the values of logic and sensing types if we heard an ordinary for example a representative of logical intuitive types from gamma with all necessary traits and we looked at your picture descriptions it would be very strange because because it will it is a jack london with somewhat uh somewhat very very bright black sensing it's tr strange it's quite strange because every intuit even if it uh, it is a black uh, if it is jack london with black sensing that somewhat is very very bright but nevertheless the quantity of intuition shall be more so we didn't have any contradictions when we analyzed your video if there could be any it will be very strange because because all the mm -hmm. necessary traits do not fit in the final version if something will fall of, out of it okay so you said there needs to be contradiction there can't be any contradictions in a row what do you mean by it by a row just to just to clarify that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um we should, uh, to make a final conclusion about uh, the socionic type, we should have mm -hmm. a necessary number of significant features. We should identify clearly what is the quadra, what are the aspects, what is the yeah. club, and uh, some final things like inter introversion, extroversion. We rely only on uh, aspects when we identify that you had much more extroverted aspects that is why we made a conclusion that you are extrovert, not only because uh, we saw your videos and you are very active. It is a common understanding of extroversion in psychology, but socionics does not always fits, does not always coincides with psychological understanding of extroversion and introversion. So yeah. may, maybe, maybe you are introvert, but very active, but not. According to aspects, you have much more extroverted aspects. So all the introverted types are not even considered. So we should identify the quadra, we should identify the main dichotomies, logic, ethics, sense, and intuition. And, and that's all. So if we have enough, enough traits, so we can make a final con conclusion. I see, so it's very much sort of like, a, almost like a coin system where you start with a quadra, peripheral or central. And once you've done that, you've eliminated everything which could be in peripheral if you've chosen central. So by that point you're then looking within to find what then it could be so looking at the amount of black sensation is only then relevant to telling apart which um extroverted and um central quadra i could be because you've already ruled out everything else something like an esc something like an ILE doesn't really make any difference that's already been ruled out so would you, is, is that what is that would you say that's the process you followed that you didn't really look at the black sensations prevalence in terms of how it's answering those questions uh, until after uh, alpha and delta had already been ruled out uh, <clears throat> I, I understand your question um, sometimes it's really very hard to identify what is the type we are looking at and mm. for some peripheral types there it is allowed to express much black sensing 
but there are only two types there are hugo and stirlitz who have uh four four dimension black sensing but all the yeah. other necessary traits do not fit in that types and we are just failed uh, if we suppose for example hugo about you you have too little ethics that that mm. not that's not working if we if we suppose for example stirlitz about you where is white sensing where is um, white ethics we have uh, we have no a single trait of delta quadra so it just it don't it just doesn't fit the final version something mm. like that it makes sense i mean some people did mention that i like for instance hot foot baths as example of a white sensation um showing mm. i know you mentioned that in um in the, your response to me on facebook although you said there's also quite quite rare to find those examples in what i was talking about mm, yes and i wonder also were there any questions which you had written to target white sensation so i know if you're talking about the political side as you said that was more of a black sensation oriented question mm -hmm. oh, of course all the political questions are directed to central quadro values but it's mm -hmm. not that periphery quadras are like to answer these questions in most cases we have several thousands of observations in that periphery quadras do not like do not have much to speak about these questions they are not interested in that peripheral quadras trying to stay away from these questions at all uh, only those types who have black sensing um, a bit stronger like stirlitz for example they have a little more interest in politics but not always as well we should uh, also find all the other necessary traits so we have those questions but we have very different questions not about only central quadra values we have mm. very wide range of questions where people can speak uh, just what they are interested in they can f easily uh, notice what for example the open question what uh, phenomena in the modern world disturb you the most it's a very wide question every type has something to say about it so never the, it's, it doesn't mean what quadra he is from and every type is speaking of what he's uh, having in his um, view what aspects is he interested in so in which case so when you as you said there's there is a there are questions which are more geared towards black sensation that peripheral there are questions there which peripheral quadras won't want to talk about won't want to answer but are there any questions there which the central quadras wouldn't want to answer uh, there are no such questions our our questions are mostly either universal or directed to certain values so it is yeah. some so in some cases in in some sense we have a little lack questions of periphery quadras but it doesn't if if, if our methodology was somewhat um, mistakeable or something like that we would never receive a peripheral quadra types using that methodology but it's not like that we have periphery types and they are can they can be easily seen and they mm. answer the questions from the position of their values from the position of their uh, aspects and it's quite okay we just the day before tomorrow the day before yesterday we had a girl who who is a dumas sensory ethical introvert she answered the same questions and uh, everything is okay it's obvious that she's from periphery quadra ethic introvert white sensation ethics is black and everything like that so I'm, okay. I'm not sure that the conclusion that if it weren't right we'd never get someone from peripheral quadra would hold water there's there's always the case that <clears throat> simply due to the sheer amount of variability in people that you, you'll get at least one in almost any metric which you draw. Normally when we do, at least in most scientific methodologies, we expect there to be anomaly, or at least people pass a certain bar. But I'd say, rather than say that if it's, if it's not right, if there is sort of a bias or a skew, that we wouldn't get any on this side, wouldn't it be more reasonable to say if there were a bias or skew, we'd just get far fewer on that side than what would be normally balancing out? it does seem to me that there are fewer peripheral quadra people being typed in your system than central quadra at least in among the english videos i've seen mm -hmm. um it uh, also depends 
on the audience because me and my mm. colleagues are from Beta and we have special audience. It, it is also selected by quadro values, by the perception of information. And it's quite logical that people from certain quadras come to us more often and uh, people from periphery quadras come more rare to us. But if, for example, sometimes it happens like that, our, our system cannot uh, embrace all the variety of characters and socionic type manifestations that occur in the real world. Sometimes it happens so that uh, if we are watching a video and we do not completely understand what is what is this, what is the type in front of us. In this case, we always see some um, some gaps in in the final version. For example, we see that it is ethical type and nothing more. Sometimes, mm. whether the questionnaire was filled out not very properly or maybe the person was just tired and not very interested in the questionnaire. There are many cases, but in such cases, we al always uh, ask people to give us some more information. We have special uh, additional questionnaires. We have special questionnaires that contain special pictures that help, in, that mm. help us to distinguish the dichotomies and to check them one more time. So it is not a problem. If we don't see something, we just ask for more information. And if we have some doubts, for example, when we are looking, when we have watched the video and we have doubts, we always uh, request additional information. Because it, uh, even if our methodology does not embrace a certain case, we see that information is not, is not, uh, forgot the word. Yeah, I need to reanimate my English. It's not see. enough. It's, we we mm -hmm. see that information. We have not enough information, so we should ask for more. So our methodology does not suppose to give the final conclusion when we have uh, uncertainty about one or two dichotomies. I I, I greatly respect that, Tim. Moore, as well, I think is certainly for me. I would say that I'm someone who doesn't get the type right all the time. I think I get the type right more than the vast majority of people who are trying to type people in socionics, but I wouldn't say that, you know, there isn't more that I can learn. It's one reason why I've tried to introduce follow-up sessions following my diagnostic interviews, just to check, just to make sure what mm -hmm. I've said about someone is actually lining up to their experiences. Um, but I guess this also brings me back to, because the area which is concerning me a little bit, that this, this is meant to be the first coin, the first thing which you use to I have to eliminate half the type, half of potential typings. If you're working at someone's peripheral or central, if that's the first coin. That needs to be the most foolproof thing in your toolkit, because if it isn't, then everything else can be thrown askew. So if you've got questions which are targeted towards one side of that, towards the central quadrants, and working out, you know, what people are, you know, which then moves people to central quadrants, they mention uh, or answer those questions quite fully. But you're not doing something for the other side and that's your very first coin your very first dichotomy that could throw a lot of thing out um, a lot of different things out of whack potentially you know we are not working just uh like following the concrete steps step number one central or periphery uh it is okay. it, it we have all these uh we have all these dichotomies like at the same mm -hmm. time because we yes. can never predict what uh, what trait or what dichotomy will be shown in a certain questionnaire. So we yes. don't throw away just the half of the socionic types on the first okay. step. It would be very stupid, I think, to, to, to exclude and, and nothing more. We have, uh, we have some hypotheses in the beginning of watching video. We are checking this, checking if possible this type or that quadra. And we are collecting all the traits until the end if we have an, a predictable and... Uh, without any contradiction results. So mm. something like that. We do not throw away, throw this, throw this, and we have only type left. Okay, let it be. It's, it's not like that. Okay, no, okay, that makes sense. Um, I think that is, is sensible. And I think that's also what I do. Like I have, uh, similar to you, I have a general idea that you should probably work out Quadra first and work out within Quadra. I think that is the most salient way of approaching it. But it doesn't mean you can't go back and rethink if you worked your way down into some sort of rut. Of course. What I then wonder then is if someone therefore, if I um 
if I hadn't shown so much black sensation in my pictures, would you then have reconsidered if I'd be in a peripheral quadra? Um, if I'd already answered with great gusto all these political questions? Because I answer, I think, almost any question with gusto. You know, we have a certain number of axiom. Is that correct in English? Axiom in our word. Yes. So every person has only his own aspects. And mm. if he is trying not to speak using that aspects, he's just keeping silence. We have nothing else to say except our aspects. That is why we have those pictures, because I've heard thousands of descriptions of that pictures and people yeah. of certain types use their own aspects. And if we are, if, for example, there are some cases, in some cases it happens like that, a person has read a number of socionic sources, he has a certain type that he likes, and he tries to make a role playing. For example, he likes to be a Hamlet, for example, and he's repeating some expressions from the descriptions. It's always obvious. It, it looks ridiculous and we see that. And if we can, if we show a picture to him, he just gives him away very easily. He's speaking only those aspects that, that he have. And we have nothing more to say in other aspects. It's like a language that you, for example, speaking from your childhood. For example, if you are an Englishman and you speak only English language, you have no other language. And uh, people from oh. other quarters which have other I, aspects, they are speaking Chinese and they have no other language except. I mean, I, mean I, I certainly think that could be true for the Englishman. I'm not so sure it's so true for the Russian or the, or say the Frenchman or anyone else who's having to adapt to the lingua franca that is English. But um, I, I do wonder though, because as you said, there was, you, you were talking before about on balance, there's more um, black sensation than there is, say, black intuition in my analysis of these photographs. In which, but then you're saying that I, that really people only really speak in terms of their aspects, their valued aspects, I imagine. That's what you mean. And if that's the case, then surely there wouldn't be any black intuition. But as we said, there is black intuition, at least some of it, in terms of how I'm moving from what I can observe in the picture towards speculating on whatever that could mean, at least in several of those photo of those different paintings. So is, is that a contradiction or am I misunderstanding you? <clears throat> you know, if we take only your description of pictures, if we take, uh, if we put away your answers in the questionnaire, mm. uh, I would say that we hear sensation in general and black sensation in most cases so mm. using th that information we can uh, suggest that we are hearing from black sensation type information so sensation in general and black sensation mostly although you also said that you couldn't really find much white sensation in me so if there's sensation in general why was there such a distinct lack of white sensation or is it just that you found just you, you do you have a category for just sensation without specifying which um, no, we have, uh, look, uh, the point is sensation. What is the difference between black and white sensation? Both sensations are about real objects of the world. And yes. it is okay for a person from central quadra who is having black sensation as valued or as strong, uh, to speak mostly about objective characteristics of objects. Mm who are obviously seen, and these characteristics can be estimated and described. White sensation is a subjective, subjective sensation from, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. Mm. For example, if we have some, uh, if we are showing some picture, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter what picture it is, because if a person has white sensation, he will find white sensation in this picture or, or sensation in general but if he has white sensation he says about his subjective physical senses from this picture for example if we have on the picture a gray sky it is objectively gray it is an objective characteristic yeah. but if a person says i'm looking at this picture and i'm cold because of this picture I feel like I'm wet about this picture. That will be the subjective sensation, white sensation. I give an, a, a very mm. simple 
simplified example, but just to show the difference between that. Interesting. It's interesting they use the the objective and subjective terminology as well. It comes radical from the discoverer of Carl Gustav Jung: black and white, yeah. extraverted, yes. introverted, objective and subjective. Right, I see. I've I've often thought that that I've always had difficulty with that terminology, just because I'm thinking what we personally think is sort of implicit rather than explicit. Uh, rather, whereas what is clear for everyone to see is clearly explicit information. And I wonder how that keys in, how that gels with some of the information dichotomies, say external and internal, or involved and detached, which we're used to, to define, say, intuition from sensation or ethics from logic. Do, do you use those information dichotomies? Uh, what actually? Oh, well, for, for instance, um, as an example, I, I, I would have said that the difference between say, sensation and intuition is that sensation is more, um, it is, is uh, sensation is external, that it is rooted in something more explicit, that sensation doesn't need to be reinterpreted by the individual to be shared. Whereas intuition, so the abstract imagery, that does need to be reinterpreted to be shared. Like if I talk about different ideas such as epiphany, if I talk about um, anti-disestablishmentarianism, if I talk about, um, um, say, um, even potential, these different things have no real physical form to them. Mm -hmm. And I can't point to that. But that, I'd say, is these, these ideas, they have to be reinterpreted by you for you to understand what they actually are and what they look like in your head. And that's how I would have distinguished between intuition and sensation to begin with. Whereas I'd say that sensation in general is about something which is um, is to be seen, is for people to be able to point at and look at. And yes. I would I would group sort of both kinds of sensation under it, as it were. Mm -hmm. I would have I would have said also that sensation, as opposed to intuition, is also more involved. It's more you feel it rather than think about it. Whereas intuition can only be thought about. You can think about sensation as well. You can think about sweet cake, for example. It will be sensation. I mean, you can. Well, you, you, you when you when you picture it in your in your head, even you are thinking about certain colors, and the colors are also resembling what you would see in real life. And you wouldn't really have an example of that if you hadn't already seen it in real life in some sort of way. Um, you could, of course, piece together. Um, a new dessert from other sorts of sensory data which you have already picked out and have picked and put together, of course. But it isn't. But when you're sort of considering it, you're you're looking at it in your head as if it is actually the real thing. When you consider the smell, you try to recall the smell which you've smelt before. Um, so I I think even then that the memory, the memory of a sweet cake, for instance, or even something composed of memories of other things. I would have said that sort of would have originated at least from sensation and for someone else to then know what you, when you mean a sweet cake or well, either you're pointing to the real sweet cake or you're pointing to some sort of abstract idea taken from the sweet cake an abstracted gestalt of it which i think is perhaps moving into the intuition mm. do, do you see what I mean? yes according to our understanding of sensation and intuition it uh, it is not it has no much difference uh, it has no significant meaning because if you are looking at real cake or if you are thinking about cake or if you are just imaging a cake or recalling the taste of cake, it's all about sensation because it's not an abstract object. But, yes. for example, if you are thinking about post-positivism, post that will be an intuitive mm. idea. Yeah. It will not be touched by your hands. Yes. No, no, so, exactly. I think, I think we're in agreement. A very high level of, of abstraction. Yes, but in which case then, if we apply Jung's objective and subjective across the board to all of them, what would objective intuition, I imagine extrovert intuition, be like? How can that be both intuitive but also objective in the way that uh, sensation, extroverted sensation, black sensation can be objective? That is a very good question, you know, and I think that it is not uh, completely 
um, distinguished yet in socionics because the authors which created socionics 40 years ago they described mm. it very in a very simple simplified way they just told that black intuition is a potential it's too simple mm. because potential can be in every function we have we can have black sensation potential for example this country is potentially dangerous it is a potential yeah. but it's not about intuition uh, these people can have potential in their relations it is a potential mm. in ethics so the word potential does not mean uh, intuition itself it's not necessary to describe the whole information aspect so uh, for us we are not having black intuition in our values so it is a quite not uncompleted question that we are still studying and collecting information mm -hmm. uh, we collect this information just by listening to people who are from periphery quadras because we cannot have anything more objective than to listen to those people who are true representative of those periphery quadras especially we're interested in the uh, thoughts and uh, some for example expressions poems and as answers to the questions when black intuits are replying to questions and when they are describing for example pictures if we we see that it is an intuitive type and his intuition or her is uh, obviously not white we see that it is black intuition and when they are describing uh, the pictures uh, there is a term in socionics static and dynamic we do not mm. use that term about all the eight aspects. We don't think it's quite necessary for typing or something like that. But when we speak about intuition, I think it is quite relevant to use static and dynamic because uh, every intuit has a very abstract thinking, has very um, imagination is much more higher than sensing types have. And it is very obvious when we show pictures that are not down to earth, but pictures that have some symbolic sense, some philosophical sense. All these pictures provoke intuits to turn on their imagination and to think what it could be about. What is the hidden sense? And what uh, when we are listening to black intuits, they are often telling the deep idea that is hidden behind of all the um, that is depicted on the picture and they are speaking about the hidden symbol the hidden meaning it often is described like very like a kaleidoscope it is a very multi i forgot the word i forgot the word where is translator i'm sorry <laughs> uh, no, the kaleidoscope where it's got lots of different patterns lots of different uh, shapes and colors appearing and it has many possible combinations is that what you mean yes multi-sided it's so simple i thought that there was a much more complicated word in english multi-sided multi-faceted okay. multi is the posh way of saying it yes it just means latin yeah. uh, in your face yeah and it is it is very important to listen to intuits from alpha and from delta because they are black mm. intuit completely different uh, because if we are listening to uh, intuits ethics from delta huxley and dostoevsky they are speaking about the potentials of people about their hidden talents about the hidden potential of relations between people about the hidden traits of character that people might even not uh, recognize in themselves so black intuition in delta works about people about ethics mm. and about their hidden um, character traits while mm. if we have logics from alpha who have uh, logic combined with black intuition it is a hidden potential of information the hidden idea that has some hidden potential in it and they are very mm very abstract thinking and it can be only observed in their activity for example we type salvador dali as don quixote and um, black, yeah. black creative types they often bring something that is very unusual to all the people that they are bringing the ideas that diff that are different from the whole experience of hum humankind if we take the most talented ones for example carl gustav jung was a black intuit 
Salvador Dali was a black into it. So they brought something from the abstract sphere because intuition is not con connected with real world. It is connected with the sphere of ideas. So they bring something in ideal world, in, in the sphere of ideal. They bring something in science or in literature or in art that is not, uh, that hasn't ever been before. That is very remarkable and differs greatly from, from everything that was before. So that innovative yeah. sense is, is hidden in black intuition. That is why they have very kaleidoscopic uh, thinking. And when they are interpreting the pictures, it is quite obvious that they have black intuition and they have very diverse interpretations about the pictures. So it can be, it, it cannot be mixed with uh, or mistyped with, with something, something else. So black intuition is something like that. But more, of, of course, when we, uh, for example, we have a hypothesis that it is a black intuit in front of us, we should not only hear that because the manifestations of black intuition can be very unusual to us that we never heard before, we should find all the other necessary traits to make the final conclusion. For example, if we have alpha, we should find black ethics, white logic, and yeah. everything that, that should be there. So something like, like that. Okay, I mean, I, I see what you mean there. So it's interesting because you, you, you say you'd expect this sort of great diversity of interpretation around the pictures. But it's also interesting that I said earlier, actually right at the beginning about a very diverse range of interpretations about each of the different words that I was asked to define. But in that context, you said, no, that's got nothing to do with black intuition. That's got everything to do with, with logic. And so I'm wondering why, why is that different? And another point about these black intuitive types where they have to bring something which no one has ever seen before and to have a sort of a very pure, almost genius level origin originality in their intuition. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, fine. I'm just thinking, what would be, so I guess two points here. What would be examples of black intuition, which no one have ever seen before, maybe in some of your black intuition friends, but nevertheless, it wouldn't be, say, something which would be typical of a genius. And also, how would you explain that, that thing about the multitude, the multifaceted definitions I gave of each word, if that's got nothing to do with uh, black intuition? Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, when you gave your definitions of the world, of the words, and this first section with uh, definitions is aimed to see whether is person having white or black logic mostly. So it is not directed to sensing intuition because sensing sensation intuition is mostly shown in the pictures section. It's, it's most obvious. We don't even um, have any suggestions when we are listening to person uh, who is uh, giving definitions we are just looking at the color of logic what is uh, what is valued by this person so your descriptions uh, your definitions were quite white logical so that is why we have only this this position right that's interesting because in which case almost you want to say therefore that black intuition cannot show up in this particular question that yes. you know, okay but I, I don't i don't necessarily understand why it is the case that black intuition can't show up in that question i know it's you really, i know you said one it's really can, because you cannot predict you cannot predict how it is uh, how the answers will be because it is mm. the, the typing process is quite unpredictable i would say because you yes. never know what what question will show what aspect sometimes it really is but bl black into it it's not necessary that black into it will give some very long expression or uh, an, a great number of explanations for this this or that term black intuition is i cannot give you any examples right now because i don't have them in front of my eyes and i easily forget them because they are not it is uh, this aspect is not valuable to me and it is easily forgotten i have to put down all that expressions not to forget them because my my psyche is uh, as well is filtering the information 
but I would say that uh, the black intuition, if if a concrete person would like to show, and if the, if we see the black intuition in the descriptions, in the definitions, it will be something very original, very unusual, like a riddle, like um, a, a play of words or something like that. Because black intuition tends to be very original, unexpected, uh, and black intuition, its function in the society is to bring something new with an unusual angle that nobody expected, something unexpected, something very complicated, not just long, but some very original. And this is the moment about black intuition. Yeah. No, okay. Now that, that sounds that sounds more familiar to me than the other one about something totally original, but certainly finding something new and what people hadn't yet seen before by taking a different angle at something. No, I, I can totally relate to that. I'm I'm just I guess I'm just it's interesting what you say there as well about your your memory and that you don't have such a good memory for the black intuition side. Now that's interesting to me because I had a feeling that you were having a cake but also eating that cake. And what I brought along like every SLE master um beta should do I should bring a weapon to any sort of fight. And so I've brought a fork with me. I have brought a fork. And with this fork, I want to um, explore uh, or at least poke at some of your theory. The fork is this, the two prongs to this fork are the following, that either modern socionics is purely focused on semantics, purely focused on the words, which we are using to describe different things in front of us and make sense of our world around us. Or it's not purely semantic. It also relates to other things, such as memory, the ability, the ability or capability to remember things, our ability to then move from that into aspects of behavior, aspects of interactions with others, and also our relationships with others. And I call this a fork because I think both, both um, potentials lead to certain problems. The first one, that modern socioeconomic is purely semantic. If it is purely semantic, then it means that re what Kamani has said is that it means it's like chopping off the legs of socioeconomics, that it can't give us anything sort of more practical or useful or beneficial towards our lives in terms of our behaviours, in terms of um, our career paths, in terms of our relationships with people. It can't give us all the information which people usually go into socionics and other personality typologies looking for. Whereas if it's the case that it's the other prong, that actually it does also relate to our memory, relate to our behavior, relate to these sorts of aspects. In which case, why is it then that when I was going through the profile, which you, you kindly had written, I know it was the rough profile, I know it wasn't the completed version, but when I was reading through that, that seemed to me to be around 50% accurate. And I know my fiance who knows me very well, and I haven't been, I haven't been lying to her over the past um, few years of our relationship. Um, I, I've been as honest as I can be with her, of course, um, as honest as I can be with anyone. And she didn't feel it related to me much at all. We, we both agreed that it was around 50% of what we agreed with, mostly due to the abstract logic side, which you said, which is interesting, because I know I think you, you treat intro, introverted logic, white logic as being a bit more abstract, whereas I'd yeah. say actually it can be more concrete as well, depending on what it's put with, whether with black sensation or, or black intuition. So those are my point. Those are the two prongs to my fork, as it were. And I was wondering, what would be your response to that? How how do you dodge both those prongs? Can you dodge both those prongs? Or is there something wrong with one of those prongs or both of them? Uh, you know, it depends on the task because we cannot just throw away the fact that certain uh, socionic types have some distinctive behavioral patterns. But mm. many people, and I saw that in your group as well, and it is okay but that majority of people do not understand the difference between modal and between uh, certain actions that people do every day. 
and mm. there is socionic type in all of that we do not use any role models or behavioral patterns for typing we are mm. coming quite the opposite side at first we type person using semantic method and then we look at his behavioral pattern and only that that way allows us to make some conclusions that for example mm -hmm. for this type it is quite okay to do something like that so we when we speak about typology we can never describe every representative of this or that type because on our planet there are seven billions of people and we cannot make up a profile that fits everyone we are just describing the most relevant the most frequent uh, role models what are they occupied in the society so we cannot rely on everyday actions that that thing really irritates me the most oh i like coca-cola my girlfriend likes pepsi cola what types do we have all yes. that questions, yes. all that questions are completely ridiculous and i'm sorry i looked at your document that you sent me today the uh, <laughs> it it is the same category to me oh i like to express myself frankly i dislike when somebody expresses himself frankly or something like that it has no any connection with type or with quadra because every type every person can have a dozens of reasons to do like that or not to do like that and there is no any stable connection with function or with type or with quadra we do not type like that and uh, this is a very down-to-earth level where personality is occupied where personality acts not the socionic type socionic type is much more deeper it is a mechanism of our psyche none of the socionic types presupposes if he will be open-minded or simple-minded or something like that there there is no connection so we type using semantic method we type using of course we have observations when we type to several hundreds and even thousands of people we have observations about the appearance of people about their facial facial uh, expressions the model of their mimical reactions and something like that it, there is some connection but it is a question of research it is not the final conclusion we have found out that um, semantic method it's is the most reliable because we don't need to uh, look at the person in his or her daily life we don't need to live with him and to observe him every day to look how does he behave on on the work at home with his children with his parents we, we don't we don't care it has nothing to do with socionic typing it's enough to listen his answers when he answers our questions when he describes pictures and it is it's quite okay because semantics cannot be imitated semantics cannot be um, somewhat uh, a person cannot um, i forgot the word <clears throat> it cannot be it, it's always sort of genuine and authentic when someone uses it yes a person cannot cheat us using our method because we always know more than he supposes and we always show him we of course if he learned somewhat he learned answers to certain questions we can always ask him more questions and he has nothing else uh, but his own functions and semantics so that is the most reliable method uh intertype relations of course they work for example we have many 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 uh cases when a person comes to us for typing we type him or her and give, give him results and everything okay some time passes and another person comes to us we type him or her and everything is okay and later we know that they are friends or later we know that they are brother and sister or something like that and intertype relations working it is quite objective it is a quite clear experiment because we do not know that these people are communicating with each other sometimes we have the whole families are typing and we see what intertype relations do they have and they give us a feedback that everything is proved and our typing coincides with the theory of intertype relations everything is working so semantic methods is, is quite clear if we take this 
as, as the basic element we are typing and later we are watching what is happening between the people so it, it goes something like that the behavior of course there's uh, some behavior models that are uh, peculiar to this or that type but they can only be observed on a large time scale for example if we look at biography of some person or if we look what does he do on a long term for example months or years what does he do in his work how does he socialize what is his strategy but not his everyday life if he is drinking coca-cola or pepsi cola this says nothing about his subsonic type the, the scale the, the misunderstanding of socionic scale is very upsetting me you know I, when i see when somebody's typing oh my brother likes to wear blue pants what is this type yeah um, but to more i would say there is I, I can see exactly why you would disagree with those very sort of specific behaviors people use and i agree we can't you know determine type from whether someone likes coca-cola or not i completely agree with you on that point now i have a little table actually because i preempted that you would answer the question um we, we, we would get to the subject so let me just share that now and what i have here is basically a table of what i think to be the relationship of behavior with socionics i think that socionics has a major role in terms of our motivations and our capabilities our general fluid intelligences for taking in information and applying that in the way which is appropriate to any sort of situation i think that values and uh, valued elements and strong elements are playing a major role here but then that always has to pass through this membrane this barrier which i think is composed of the demands of a situation and also how familiar we are with those particular demands of a situation and as right by passing through that those things are of course changed it's not going to be it's not going to be exactly the same as what our mo you would get from actually reading motivations or capabilities directly we can't read those directly all we can actually see therefore are this part here the behavior and i think behavior also comprises things like semantics the things which we also say the things which we speak about the things that we do anything which is sort of observable i would say is behavior now we can't just type people based on specific behaviors no that is only a small teeny weeny sample and we need to even think it's actually relevant or not so i wouldn't say that coca-cola or the color of one's trousers are actually relevant i would say if someone is dressing very flamboyantly and has a tendency to dress very flamboyantly then you can may say that may be type relevant you can't do it from one instance for instance because that is limited by the situational demands I think so, you know, there, there, can, there can always be a situation where any type may, for instance, wear, um, wear a very extravagant costume. Whereas I'd say instead, after looking at enough behaviors, which is what I try to do, looking at enough of these behaviors, I try to do a thematic analysis to pick out what are the overall trends, what is appearing again and again and again and again. I think you're doing the same sort of thing with, um, with semantics. You're also doing some thematic analysis. It's not about one instance of black sensation. There are multiple instances and that's lining up. And then from that, I get a sense of the tendencies of behavior, the behavioral tendencies. And I'd say that is what is most relevant to typing. Those behaviors which are associated with certain elements, the tendencies of that, those themes, I would say that is something which I would perhaps rely on more in terms of socionics. So I think it's very far removed from say, what type of cola someone's using, what colored trousers people are wearing. So I, I do agree with you based on the examples you're, you're using, but I wouldn't say that those are the points I'm trying to make about behavior. And certainly about the test I'm trying out at the moment is a, a tendency is an attempt to work out different values. And it is sort of a work in progress at the moment. It's one reason why I felt I would have benefited from your your very sage wisdom and input as regards the beta quadra. But yes, I also wanted to mention a couple of points there because you mentioned semantics about being about reliability. And I wonder about that because what would be the means by which you can tell if there is a reliability? And for instance, if you're if you if you don't have anything to measure that against except just more semantics if you're not looking at behavior 
how do you tell that's reliable? All you see, what you seem to have instead is this idea that because you believe that semantics is something which cannot be faked, it is something which is in somewhat removed from sort of day-to-day -day situations. People can't necessarily learn what the semantics are of a particular type. You can't necessarily say what is what. That seems to me to be a lead to an, also an unfalsifiability in the semantic method rather than a demonstration of its reliability. I think is what um, Karl Popper said. But if it isn't falsifiable, then it's, it's, it's not even as good as something that is wrong. It becomes something which becomes meaningless. I'm taking Karl Popper's um, principle there. I'm not going to go ahead and say that yours is meaningless, of course, but that's what he was saying. And I'm wondering if, is, is this idea of um, the semantic method being something which is not then looking at behavior, not then checking through some independent methodology to see if it's matching up, is that going to lead to some sort of problem? Is the fact that I can't relate very well to the SLE description and the and beta ST description in general, which you provided, but I can relate very well to what you said about seeing a potential and idea. For me, socionics is about unlocking all this different potential, whether that is about helping people in our society in different ways, say for education, through um, understanding different historical figures and what their motivations and personalities were. It was about helping people with their careers, their jobs, helping people in their relationships and seeing all these different things open up which could be used if we just got it in the right level of public knowledge. I relate so strongly to that and people around me, people who know me can see that in me, not just through a single behavior, but time and time again. This is, I think, why there was some of that controversy because if we move at all beyond the semantics, the black sensation doesn't appear to be something which is showing up consistently in, in my behaviors. In fact, it shows up very, very little in any sort of behavioral context. It's so your subjective I can see vision, you know? It's your subjective vision. Because many people say, where do I have those black sensation? I don't have it. And then we see that person in real life and black sensation is everywhere. He just don't pay attention to that. Oh, but it's not just me. I, I'm saying because almost everyone else who knows me is, is uh, saying that. I, the person I that has our methodology in his head, because if you are in your community that does not share our methodology, they, of course, do not notice black sensation in your behavior. That is the point. I see. And OK. Now, I think that would make sense if the people are then using the semantic method. But that, that's sort of the point. Yes, if people are already using the semantic method, it does make sense that they would see the black sensation semantically. But what I'm saying is behaviorally, I can't see it, find anyone who's saying that I'm showing much black sensation behaviorally. Yeah, that, that's the, the point. point. What do you suppose under black sensation in behavior? Being rude, being pushy or what? Well, not to say being rude or being pushy, but being able to sort of dominate one's physical environment, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to make you, it has to be successful and get you what you want. Mm -hmm. It has to be a motivation towards more concrete acquisitions. Things which are, say, property, things about space, territory, having a desire for those sorts of things. This idea, to, this power orientation, things you described in the profile. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily seeing this, this, this emphasis towards power. What, what people see in me is that there are orientations towards accumulations of new ideas, expanding one's potential. So, I, and yes, I do take the point that people within the community, say my community, can be um, a silo think tank. I think that is very true. People can be. I think that can apply to us. It could also apply to the archetype center community, apply to any community, but also people outside of that community. That is where what I'm finding interesting to look at. People outside the community are saying that I might be some sort of LII or even some sort of SLI, people say most recently, because I'm showing such little in the way of black sensation. But there's such a, a gap between what you're describing through my semantics and what other people are describing, people outside of the community are describing according to my behaviors. Then other people know me better say, yeah, I use some black sensation sometimes. I um I can stand up for myself to some degree. I can um when I'm with an especially um unwillful person, 
I can call the shots to some degree. But with other people, I can just sit and sort of let them take all the shots and I'll just sort of not really push myself against them. And and so this this is this is the sort of the, the big the big issue for me when reading said their profile, trying to find how it applies to my life, but also weighing that against what you're also saying. You're also saying about your own memory that you're not you don't remember black intuition so well. You seem to identify certain aspects of what shows up in the semantics also in behavior. You're checking the intertype relationships to see if that also matches up. So those things do seem to be um, there does seem to be some moving towards looking outside of the semantics. But then as soon as I then say, OK, but the semantics aren't relating to behavior in my sense of a word. And that's when you seem to be saying, no, 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 it's about the semantics. The behavior doesn't matter. So I guess I'm just interested in finding what is the consistent position here? Is it that semantics is just what it's about or is it that there is behavior? If there is also behavior or memory or other things in type relations, which are very much linked to behavior, I'd say, then why would we be looking at those? Uh, or shouldn't we just be focusing just on semantics and making it just a semantic theory? And if we do that, of course, there are then the problems of, well, it then becomes less, less useful to people. But that's sort of a sacrifice. We either have to be more useful to people, but then check outside of semantics to see if our semantics are right. Or we have to um, be less useful to people, not very useful to people, but at least preserve our internal consistency. That's why I'm that's what I'm just trying to, to figure out because there has been that there has been both sides of a fork uh, from what you've said so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand mm -hmm. my 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 befuzzlement? Yes, yes. You know that is the point. Uh, we not only use socionics, we use psychosophy, and uh, mm. according to our experience, the greater part of what can be observed in the behavior, uh, it is described by psychosophic type, which is independent towards socionic type. Uh, for, for example, if we see some person who does not express some stereotype black sensation behavior, it is not the reason to consider him, uh, him ILE, for example, because if we are speaking about intuition or sensation, it can be revealed it can be reliably revealed only using the semantic method we can observe for example if i was a student and you were my classmate for example and i just watched you from a side i could observe you for a very long time and i could not have the idea whether you are intuitive or sens sensing type because there are things that can be only be expressed when you are speaking, when you are telling semantic method. And the behavior strongly uh, depends on the psychosophic type. So if, for example, you are not very interested in physical acquirements or property or prosperity or something like that, it is completely described by physics in psychosophy. There is no connection with socionics here. We can only speak about semantic method. That is why when people appeal to us, for example, for professional orientation, we always identify socionic and psychosophic types because there are 384 combinations of socionic and psychosophic type. The behavior and the information, that, that is the division. The behavior is mostly described by, by psychosophy and the information that our brain processes, it's about socionics. Okay. Now... Okay, I will, I, I, that gives me two potential areas to explore with you. The f first of all, I would would wonder. Maybe it's more of a. I'm not sure if I'm being too pedantic, but just because you were saying before that black intuition being a, a vulnerable function for you was a reason why you weren't remembering that sort of thing, like say past ideas of people, and also how it then relates to intertype relations. If we've relegated behavior to psychosophy and we've left semantics with socionics, that doesn't answer the question in terms of what, why are you then having disparities in your memory based on the socionics rather than the psychosophy? Or is that something which can be explained by psychosophy instead and it wasn't due to black intuition because there isn't any black intuition in psychosophy? And also, how do re intertype relationships then make sense if behavior, which I think is a very important part I think it'd be, it's quite a controversial thing to say, but it's semantics 
which makes a relationship work, not behavior, or maybe I'm overly simplifying. The other point is then, if you look into psychosophy, and I, maybe I'll bring this up later, but it's more, is psychosophy equipped for the task to describe behavior? That, that, that's, that's one thing I also want to ask you. Maybe I'll ask the first point first, and we can look into that a bit later. <clears throat> we use semantics to identify socionic type, and socionic type relations are still here, and they are objectively working. But at the same time, psychosophy was once created as, a, as an alternative to socionics, because the mm. author of psychosophy was uh, kind of disliked towards socionics, and he tried to make something alternative. But it finally, it turned out that psychosophy and socionics are applied together. And both socionics and both psychosophy influence actual people's interaction because there are also intertype relations in psychosophy and they are in socionics and they both influence uh, at, at their own levels because if if, uh, if uh, to describe it in a simplified way uh, we we often type people from stable couples and stable families for example these are people that are together for two, three, four, and more years, and they feel quite okay. From the point of view of socionics, uh, the, uh, the majority of such couples have neutral or good intertype relations from the point of view of socionics. So here the theory is working quite okay. We haven't met any stable pair with conflict intertype relations because it really contradicts the initial theory of socionics. We haven't met um, super ego. Recently, we had one such couple and they have really very difficult relations in a human sense and in socionic uh, sense as well. So the theory is uh, quite proved. We have uh, neutral intertype relations and positive intertype relations and they really work and psychosophy brings even more to that because we have positive relations in psychosophy we have some negative moments in psychosophy and uh, all that happens in various levels of what actually uh, happens between people we have socionical intertype relations and psychosophy is put uh, um, um, above it and everything is working if we have positive relations in socionics and positive in psychosophy, then it is very, very good. If we, for example, have good socionic relations and plus minus uh, psychosophic relations, that all influences very well. From the point of view of information, socionic is, is very important because all these things about your own quadra, we have many couples from one quadra and that's okay, uh, semi-duality, relative intertype relations and something like that positive and neutral relations is the majority of stable couples as we see from our statistics and psychosophy influences as well very much because in psychosophy we have very certain categories everything that is connected with will whether a person is pushy or mild or compromising it is completely connected with will and none of the socionic types has this function included into the type because we can have SLE, for example, uh, sens sensory logical extroverts who are very pushy and who are very mild, democratic and so on. It depends on the will. Uh, I... Then physics, it's about interest to material world. Emotion, it's about emotional behavior. And logic, it's about logical thinking and interests in some cognitive sphere. Okay. I think that that is also very interesting that you've collected this data on intertype relations and compared it to socionics and also with psychosophy. Do you have any, so when you have this in your statistics, do you have like a table? Do you have, how, how have you uh, recorded and also um, verified this? What has been the methodology for it? Mm, we do not have any table because we cannot, <laughs> we can, we do not have enough time to do that. We have too much work for typing that we don't have time to make any tables no. about that. We just I see when a couple comes to us to type, to identify their types in socionics and psychosophy, and they appeal to us for any recommendations about their uh, intertype relations. And we tell them, we, we are looking at them for the first time in, in our life, and we're telling them things that they actually prove 
they give us a feedback that they observe the same things according to socionics and according to psychosophy. It's very important because psychosophy, it's a more down-to-earth level of interaction between people. Okay, that makes that makes sense to me. It also, I'd say, it puts us on a very similar footing as well because I find that I wouldn't really be so invested in socionics to the degree which I am if I didn't think that when I was using it, I was also finding things working, my predictions working out based on what I could put to the test myself. If we're both operating on this more sort of anecdotal level, we're not taking any sort of formal methodological process, we're just trying it out and seeing what happens and oh, that works out very well. That's actually lining up brilliantly. What are the odds of that? I'm in a very similar situation to you in that I'm also typing people in socionics. Things are working out very well. And I'm thinking, how did that happen? Maybe this system which I'm using actually works in some way. But of course, I'm typing people very differently to how you're typing people. And so I'm wondering for us to sort of resolve this, because this becomes we're at a similar level of footing, but both our levels of evidence are more anecdotal rather than acquired through some sort of formal statistical method. If we could maybe work together to actually put together some sort of statistical method and for recording where these interpolations are working and having something quantifiable for measuring that, then I think we can move forward on that particular point. Um, and yes, I find it's interesting talking about my psychosophy type. I know you haven't formally worked. I know you haven't officially said I am this psychosophy type. I, I think you said that I was likely to be Will right. first. And I think if it is the case that I'm an SLE who's also Will first, wouldn't that be the pushy kind of SLE? Or could that the SLE also be very harmonious and try to actually keep conversations more open and understanding and not turn it into some sort of slam dunk sort of situation where they try to get one over, or try to sort of dominate someone else? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand if it's the case by your own metrics that it's the behavior, uh, that the behavior side of psychosophy is also me being sort of more of a tough, more dominant sort of figure. That also makes me even more puzzled because I don't think anyone who's observing me would say I'm a particularly dominating figure. I, mean, I, I can have a frank conversation. I can have a, an honest conversation about what my, my doubts are, but I, I, don't, I don't think that I'm trying to dominate you now, for instance. I think I'm trying to listen to your points and see where the potential is for us to bridge and, you know, have some sort of constructive way of moving forward. Does, does that make sense? Um, we don't know yet what is your type really is. So okay. I, I, I can't explain something that I don't have enough evidence. Okay, no, fair enough. I, I'll, 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 I'll give you that as well. But I would also say is that um, if I will first, I would take that as something to beat you over the head with multiple times. But I'm, I, I wouldn't want to because I don't think that's fair. And I don't think I think that's actually closing down the possibility that you could be right. I want to give you as much of a chance because I think at the end of the day you could be right and I could be wrong. I want to find that. And that's that's really important to me. I don't want to just win superficially in some sort of, oh, look at me, I, I, I managed to um, kick someone around. I, I, want, I, I want to get to the truth. And it's the theory itself, which is important to me. So yeah, I, that's something I'm just try, still trying to work that out. And there are questions there, which are sort of unresolved in that respect. I also wonder in terms of if we're using psychosophy alongside uh, socionics, that could make a situation where we have now relegated um, only um, all of socionics just to semantics. Now behavior is not anything to do with socionics. Now other things like what we're remembering, what our relationships are in that, it wouldn't make sense that if you've moved behavior towards psychosophy, that there should be anything left in terms of even writing a profile. Is it, isn't it, isn't it a contradiction to even write a, a, a profile about what SLEs are like? if we're only talking about the semantics, or maybe we can only write a profile in terms of the semantics. This is just a semantic typology, and we can only really say about an SLE, SLEs talk about these things. SLEs, when questioned on, say, photographs, draw more attention to these things rather than these things. Are we really in a position, if we have relegated socionics just to semantics, 
to actually say anything about behavior, anything about um, what, what, what these types actually tend to do, where they tend to end up. Can we even talk about SLEs being more likely to be in politics than SCI if it is truly just only semantics? Or is that then straying into psychosophy? That's what I'm finding is perhaps contradictory there. Does, does that make sense? That's also something which is puzzling me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not throwing away the behavior, as I said before, but okay. first we are collecting the representative of this or that type, and then we look what the spheres are they occupied in. So if we, for example, suppose SLE, sensory logic, we, we are searching what spheres do they come to. And most, uh, it, it's very it, it's very important what uh, psychosophic type do they have. Because, for example, if we have high will and physics, it will more likely that this person will go to some management, politics, or um, business, or something like that. If we, for example, have, we have such a singer in Russia who has type SLE, and he has first emotion. He, and he is famous singer who is singing about love and he's singing songs for women and he's very famous and high emotion makes such such orientation of his personality but yeah. when we are listening to him in uh, interview he's speaking about sensing and logic and he's definitely from second quadrant so that is why uh, socionic type and psychosophic type they influence each other they enforce each other if they are more socially expected for example if we have logical type in socionics and high logic in, in psychosophy then we have logic very logic but sometimes it happens that we have logic with high emotion and he will be very inclined to some artistic uh, activity maybe some art music and something like that for example salvador dali he was logic uh, according to socionics but he had uh, will and emotion as high functions, famous, uh, like an artist, most of all. Okay, so that, that, that does make sense in terms of behavior, the psychosophy, explaining what sort of sphere someone is going into. I think that makes total sense. But then you were also saying about the political side, that this is not for people who are of a peripheral quadrant in socionics. Most so, often, yes. Y yeah, and that, but that, that, that's where I'm... But again, that, that's that's exactly the nub of it. That's exactly the nub. If socionics is about semantics, it shouldn't really be relating to the spheres of where people are going. It could be correlated. It could be a correlation. There shouldn't be anything which is actually caused and necessitated by it because psychosophy is one which is really talking about our behavior and the spheres of what we're going towards. That, that, that's, that, that's, that, that's sort of where I'm still finding it a bit puzzling as it were. There could be a correlation, and it really is a correlation of spheres with certain functions in socionics. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But I'm strictly against about typing by down-to-earth everyday actions of, of person. It's not about yeah. sphere. It's not about informational sphere where uh, this or that type goes. So okay. in, in that sense, Really, there are spheres that can be connected with socionic types, and that could be uh, named as behavioral um, uh, behavioral pattern that is connected to socionic types, but not everyday actions that can be observed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. I, and I and I, I I agree. If we take everyday actions as being you know those sorts of comparatively trivial things like. For instance, what someone said in one particular moment, what someone, what someone's wearing, what someone's put on their head that particular day. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. I think we're aligned in that. I do think though that there is that importance of the behavioral trends in analysis. But I'm wondering, are you, if you then relegate, if you have psychosophy handling the behavior, there's no need even for those behavioral trends. And that may be a divergence in our approaches that to, to have almost to have psychosophy in the game as well that sort of forces socionics to be oh there's my black sensation thing, that forces socionics to be in um in, in confined towards the um the purely semantic um but also that also leads me to 
other questions about what I wanted to get into about psychosomatic like, so being equipped for behavior. Is it the case that something which only has four different realms, it has will, it has logic, it has emotions, it has physics, it doesn't really talk about anything intrinsically sort of intuitive or abstract in that. It doesn't really talk about, say, what kinds of ideas people are going after, whether they're opening up new possibilities, or if they're talking about sort of more determined long-term fate or destiny or the outcome, which is of importance, a singular vision. And then also whether they are someone who's more about expression of emotions, or if they're someone more about showing loyalty towards people and maintaining their existing close relationships and building those close bonds. Those sorts of distinctions, which if you were to take social science and make it more behavioral, we could explain very well. I've been able to explain that very well. And a lot of my, my write-ups, my friend Pete's written some brilliant write-ups applying social science in a way which makes, has a great deal of explanatory power by looking at behavioral tendencies, not trivial day-to-day -day behavior, just behavioral tendencies. I'm not sure we could really unlock such a richness of analysis if we're just using psychosophy, if we're just relating ourselves to four different things in many different orders. I don't think that on just the many different orders can create the same explanatory um, power because it doesn't have enough zones, it doesn't seem to have enough scope. And I guess a sort of a personal niggle of mine is that I find that if you take psychosophy and sociologics, both designed to be quite similar, as you said, Steiner wanted to sort of replace sociologics with psychosophy, that it gets sort of, there's something impure about putting them to, the two of them and using them together. But it's almost certainly going to muddy things and lead to confusion, which then need to have clear distinctions made later. I, yeah, that's more of a personal niggle rather than a, a point which necessarily you have to answer. You don't have to um, disagree. You, you can disagree about one, and that'd be absolutely fine. But that first point about the, the expanditory scope of psychosophy is it really equipped to handle such a complicated thing as behavior, not just day-to-day -day behaviors, I'm, I'm, I'll give you that, but behavioral tendencies. Can it explain all those different behavioral tendencies? Um, you know, there will always something that will not fit neither in socionics, neither in psychosophy, because their whole personality cannot be described by typologies. So mm. we are very frankly speaking that we have socionic type which is uh, responsible for information processing and the types of, of information that we are thinking and speaking about. We have psychosophy, which shows what are interaction, uh, what are interaction, um, what kind of interaction is uh, does the person have when he interacts with will, with emotion, with logic and physics. And of course, we have a huge range of everyday actions that are not connected neither with socionics, neither with psychosophy. And they are even not trying to explain that. That is why we are putting this aside, because it is not connected to, to any type. I see. Okay, there's so there's no a large range. Yeah. There is no need to take every action and to bound it to a certain type. Yes. No, I think that is right that you can't, you can't socionicify everything. But I think there are some important parts there, at least in that what, what we would deem to be the intuitive realm. There's some important parts there in behavior, which behavioral tendencies, I should say, which I found has been very rewarding to look at and analyze. And I feel that if I were to say adopt um, more of a modern socionics approach with psychosophy and socionics, I would be giving up some of those potentials for analysis. I just wanted to I wanted to ask you, Timur, do you have any questions for me? I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that for the last half, an hour and a half, I've been asking you lots and lots of very pertinent questions. And I just wanted to know, do you have any questions for me? Anything you had, you had in your mind? You know, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think about our version SLE? Does it seem completely unreal to you or not? It seems half unreal and half real. I'll say, I'll say what I do find to be real. Well, when I say real, what I feel accurate to me and what people who are very close to me also say to be accurate to me. And that's the interest in abstract logic, specifically. Understanding mm -hmm. where things are and placing to other things. I think I very much relate to that. I do have that, that white logic aspect. I would have said in my rather different interpretation that the reason it's more abstract is because it gets that from the black intuition it's put with. And that when it's put with, say, black sensation, it appears 
more differently. I would describe it differently. So more like these are my rules. This is my authority laid down. You cross this, there are consequences. And the consequences of the breaking the rules are very sort of concretely acted out. Whereas understanding things more in an abstract way in terms of idea, there's more to do ideas, how they intersect, how they make sense is why I thought that definitions and the idea of, are very highly abstracted. They are certain rules in terms of potential. They span many different manifestations. But in each time that definition holds up across those instantiations and possibilities of manifesting. So I would have thought that being more interested in lots of different de uh, definitions of things, different ways it could be analyzed and made sense of, I would have thought that's a very good example of black intuition and white logic. Personally, from my experiences, I find those who get very interested in those sorts of linguistics and those etymologies, those structures and explorations have often been the more alpha entities. And I found that more what I would type to be more SLEs and LSIs, they're more straightforward. And this means this, that means that. Because if you have lots of different interpretations, then you can't really assert your will through your structures. So, but yeah, I find that's where I'm agreeing. But a lot, pretty much everything else about the power orientation, about going into things to get some sort of advantage, to get some sort of stronger position over others, I mean, oriented around that is not capturing what I'm about, not only as a, as a personal subjective thing, because I could be totally deluded. I'm completely open to the fact that I could be deluded. But it's what everyone around me is also saying about me. People who know me not so well, who just have seen me online and videos, fair enough. People in my group who don't know me amazingly well, but also the woman who is closer to me than anyone else in my life. She reacted quite um, with quite some vivacity, I would say. Quite some, um, uh, quite some zeal almost to certain aspects of the profile, and she was trying to be. She was. She. She, she doesn't. You. It, it's only if something strikes her quite strongly that she would relate to would describe that profile in the way which she did. Um, I, I. I have a bit more. I wouldn't like to use some of the words she said. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a load of crap. But that. That is what she said, and. It, 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 I think it does mean someone, when someone who knows me that well, someone I'm going to be marrying and spending the rest of my life with, looks at the profile about me and has that reaction. I would say the profiles which I've said about people after going through typology uh, and typing someone, they haven't ever, from what I know, produced that same reaction in someone. So I think there is something there which is more than just, for instance, oh, SLE can't, that profile can't describe all SLEs. I think, yeah, maybe if some plenty of details are, lot, are off, fair enough. I think that's a fair enough point. We can't describe everyone in a profile. But if it has such a strong reaction as that, I think there is something there which maybe needs to be looked at. That maybe that involves perhaps taking a step outside of semantics just to see if everything is matching up well. I've seen a lot of people in other Russian schools who get who think that their method is one which is uncorruptible, is unfakeable. And so they think, oh, because our method is uncorrupt and unfakeable, even though we don't necessarily know it's the case, we don't have a means of actually checking that and knowing that for sure, they can they, they then start disproving criticisms from within their model rather than stepping out of their model just for a second, just to see if it actually is lining up elsewhere. And that's that's what I'm what where my thoughts are at the moment. Does that make sense, Timor? I I I don't I don't like calling something a load of crap. I think that's a it's 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 a it's a mean thing to say, but also I think that when someone reacts in that very sort of very sort of authentic way in the moment spontaneously, it carries some level of truth to it, at least for them and their reaction. So, do you agree that your questionnaire, your answers, really contained a good deal of black sensing information? I think my answers did settle on aspects of black sensation yes i think that when i was describing things to do with force describing things which which i saw in the in the paintings in the photos which related to that then i did bring up black sensation i also think in my desire to cover as many manifestations of each definition earlier on say people people were looking at using that for more than just logic the answer you gave um, of someone who looked at my definition of order and one of my definitions of order included the application of force. Yes, I, I include that definition because I know. That's very strange for a second to it, to it, include uh, that element. 
but I, I wanted to include everything because I've seen it being used that way. I've also seen it being used in the Black sense in it's not accidental, you know. We we believe we are coming from the position that we have only our aspects, and mm. something accidental is very strange. I we believe that there is nothing accidental in the answers of a person. Uh, I, I and I don't think it I don't think it's accidental. I think there are reasons for it. The question is, are those reasons interpreted and made sense of in the right way? And I think it's also very strange in terms of how people reacted around me. The reason there have been memes, I don't think it's because people are just being flippant. Yes, there is some flippancy, but I think there is because there is a reaction to something about that which doesn't make sense of people. And it's like, but it's just common sense. You can't be that. And that needs to be criticized on its own merit. It needs to be looked at and say, okay, how do you know that? How does that make sense? But we need to look at it in the other, on the other side. Are people, for that to be so incredulous to people, is there something which maybe people on the modern socionic side are also overlooking in terms of semantic methods? Could it be that black intuitives can actually talk about black sensation? Can, but, but not in such volume. It's very strange when people so, are mostly about their role function rather than about their ego block it's very strange yeah. don't believe in that such coincidence okay. no that, that, that's fair but also i'd say that when i was looking through these questions i was speaking to myself a lot of these are pointing at black sensation already and we have established that you were using questions which are designed to see if someone is in a central quadra and you weren't using questions to decide if someone was specifically in a peripheral quadra so I'm thinking maybe that could also be bringing that out. I wonder if we were to use, if you were to apply questions which were targeted more towards the peripheral quadrant to balance out, to make sure there isn't any sort of skew in the question there, would I then have suddenly say, oh, I'm, I'm not, don't have many answers for that peripheral qu uh, quadrant question. That I think would be a good way of testing it and seeing if I do, because I can't fake it. As you say, semantics can't be faked. If we assume that to be true, I am skeptical of that, to be honest, but if we assume that to be true, then I shouldn't be able to answer the any peripheral uh, quadra questions in that same way, with that mm. same level of disaster. Quite, quite like that. You, uh, I, I just, I don't want to say that you will will not be able to answer that. You will give your answers, but the aspects will remain the same. That is the point. You cannot stand right. on ears and speak like you are Chinese suddenly. Okay. So I would answer those questions still with more black sensation and not doing the black intuition, which that quadra is asking for. Is that if what you, you mean? Were, if you were from peripheral quadra, it would be clearly uh, depicted when you describe pictures. There would be a contradiction between your previous answers and the descri description of pictures, but there was no any contradiction. So everything looks very clear from the point of view of our methodology, of course. Um, okay. I would like to ask you, you told in the end of the video that you were typed as uh, ethical, intuitive extrovert. What was the explanation I interested? Because many people in your group, they appealed to Gulenka as if it is, uh, I don't know what, it, it is an authority that is final. No, not, it's not a final authority. Um, when I, I've been very critical of what Glenko has been has been doing with his newer theories, his Model G, I think it is. When I've looked at it, I found it very inconsistent in terms of how they line things up. I think it's very sort of clunky in terms of how the different ideas make sense of things. I don't see what greater use it's giving to people, other than that somehow esoterically it's showing their benefit cycle. I'm not seeing what is actually what are the benefits of this new model? Why would you use this rather than model A? I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing flaws as well. Like I saw someone the other day said, oh, I'm not an LII, I'm an ILI. But what makes me look like an LII is that I'm an harmonizing ILI. And so they've used the subtype to fudge the quadra. So that's the sort of thing which I think, no, that, that that's fudging it. Can't you see that's making it all wrong? And so, I, I'm, I am having great difficulties with Glenko, and I've had debates about Model G already with two people, with Mitchell and with Ben. And I, yeah, no, I would not say, at least from my perspective, and though, and, and a lot of people in WSS, I wouldn't say we're treating Glenko as a final authority. 
we're treating him as someone who is a renowned socionist, someone to be taken seriously for what he says. And I think anyone who has a good idea should be taken seriously anyway. But I think, you know, someone who's had that much contribution to socionics, if he says something, you should say, OK, what is he saying? Well, can we understand it? But we need to look at him critically like everyone else. He's not a final authority. And I, yeah, I disagree with him on, on a lot of stuff now, more stuff than I agree with right now. Mm -hmm. But what was the explanation of strong ethics? I, I wonder. I, I don't think, I can't remember there being a very clear or good explanation. I guess because I'm someone who's quite influential at the moment, I'm getting a lot of stuff done. Um, that is maybe the reason. He didn't give a very sort of, any sort of a profile. I didn't go to Galenko to be typed and receive a profile from him. It's more, oh, I think he's an EIE, mm. an EIE normalizing subtype. And I, I, I bought his book and I read the IE normalizing stuff. I didn't agree with a lot of it. And I thought, oh, the stuff, the only stuff which really made more sense about that was the point about normalizing being involved in some at more, be more theoretical, be more logically precise than, say, um, your average EIE. But I'm thinking ILE is already explaining that. So, yeah, I, he hasn't given me a very clear um rationale i pop but to be fair to him i wouldn't expect him to if he's giving a sort of casual typing I have to have mentioned it once because the thing is what we will say is that because galenko has been such an influence on socion thanks whatever happens to out of his mouth at any particular point will be jumped on will be torn apart will be looked at very carefully that happens when you're a celebrity and galenko is a socionic celebrity so that's what i'd say why well, i wouldn't treat it with the same level of reverence that i would treat a typing where I've gone through a proper process like yours. I treat your typing more reverence than Galenko's because you gave this more con serious consideration. Does that make sense? You know, I was typed by one of his disciples. I was typed as EIE as well, but as dominant. Mm. Uh, the e EIE, but what? Sorry? A dominant. dominant. Yes. <laughs> I see. Yeah. <laughs> that was very fun. <laughs> yeah i think he's just typing everyone who's i think he's sort of casually typing anyone who is having some sort of influence who's appearing a lot and getting things going i think he's typing them eie which yes. to me and that's in my opinion going the other way that's going towards a sort of the sort of stereotypical behavioral typing yeah. rather than actually understanding people's motivations i use behavioral tendencies to try to get to what are the underlying motivations of someone? Why are they doing the things that they are doing? Are what they're saying about themselves and what they're doing, and what other people see about them, are these all making sense and lining up in terms of a hierarchy of motivations, which I think Model A is, a hierarchy of why we're doing the things that we're doing and how capable we are at doing those things in different situations based on the strength of the other function. That's why I'm, I'm looking for when I'm doing Model A. And that's why I think I thought Model A's been able to explain very coherently and very and very effectively. So yeah. So you and I are EIE. <laughs> yeah, we're the same type. Yes. We're, 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 we're either the same type or a supervisor yeah. supervisor or a mirrors. <laughs> I like that idea. Have you how much versions of your type have you collected? Um, in socionics, yes, I've collected only three: you, Galenko, and myself. My own typing, and pretty much anyone in Western socionics, I would say, would type me Eile. It was not, even before I started typing myself and calling myself an Eile. Other people would have said I was an Eile, and people thought I was a very obvious example in the Western way of approaching socionics. Mm -hmm. Very people think I'm anything different. In other theories, say Myers Briggs. I would also come out as an ENTP. Some people are thinking maybe I could be an INTP now because I've been I've been more able to hold myself back than I was when I was younger and I was far more hyperactive. Um, whereas people in say voltology or cognitive typology, it's another group, they would type me some sort of extroverted logic type, and mm -hmm. they think that um, Ausra was an extroverted logic type, and as a result, they don't understand we don't understand introverted logic properly. So there's that as well which is interesting. I'm going to be debating on that in the weekend for people who want to see that. And mm -hmm. in, um, goodness, Eric's uh, talking with famous people. He thinks I'm an ENTP. And he did a 
so he, he, he so I align in that one um which whichever one that what other ones are there OP yes objective personality run by Dave superpowers and uh, Shannon I got benchmarked without without me even being without them saying anything they just they benchmarked me as an NETI so like an ENTP um with a certain arrangement of what they call animals a way of sort of dividing up into 712 types I think okay. 700 so I mean, no, maybe it's 512 I, I I don't I can't remember the exact number 512 that's it so there is quite a bit of alignment around the ENTP ILE sort of thing but there are also areas where I haven't come across as that in two socioeconomic schools and also in this cognitive typology which basically looks at your face they look at your face and they said I must be in like an like extroverted logic type because of my taut cheekbones um so you know and I know socioeconomics also does some visual identification so there yeah. it's a depending yeah. on the school you're wearing glasses you must be an intuitive type <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think that stuff is silly. I always thought stuff is silly. And so, yeah, I so yeah, I think there is some alignment there. How, how about you? Have you been typed by many other people other than Galenko, other than myself? I, you know that I think you're an LSI. Mm -hmm. you, are still, you are still thinking like that. This is your version, yes? Yes, I, th I think in terms of, mm. in, terms of in terms of the sociology which I practice, I think LSI makes a lot of sense from our observations. Uh, from, from what I've seen of your behavior, I think you would describe it as being because of psychosophy. And I get that because you're putting behavioral stuff more in the psychosophy range. And so that's not really relevant to the sociologics. You practice more about the semantics. And that's fair enough. But I think that, that you are aligned so well in what would be psychosophy and what would be sociologics, I think, is also quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a video answering to the same question that you answered mm -hmm. uh, in some days. So no. <laughs> I'm really interested if your version will change or remains the same. Mm -hmm. I look forward yeah. to that. I'm going to change my mind, of course. Very it's, open. It's very funny that you have so little in English sphere in english socionics there are so little directions of socionics because here in russian socionics we have 30 or 40 directions of socionics and i have collected 12 versions of my type so wow. I, I have been in all quadras mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I, very I, I i find that is interesting <laughs> it all over the place that is interesting i've had i've had someone the other day saying i'm either an intp because i i don't assert myself at all and then saying, oh, no, it doesn't quite make much sense anymore. Me, ISTJ, because I have a flower. I use a flower and I, and I dress up quite nicely. It's a good introvert sensation. There's all sorts of other. But I think everyone has their own approach to typology in some places, and it can be very chaotic. What I've been trying to do, and maybe one reason why Western social science has fewer directions, is that I've been trying to talk to people, try to make good arguments, and have people come together, converge at different understandings, to try and towards something which makes most sense, whoever has the best explanation. And that's, I think, what's hap happening more in the West. It's been mostly successful. A lot of different groups and communities I've sort of talked to, they have been trying to figure out socionics in their own way, look at different sources, quite some chaos in what the different sources can be. One thing says this, one thing says that. I've come along and I've presented what I think to be the case. I've explained why I think that to be the case. And on the vast majority of people seem to have been rather pleased or satisfied with what I've said. And some of them have started taking on my definitions and using those in their in their groups, in their online fora. And so the way I see it is this. Once we can get some level of alignment, enough alignment on our different understandings, that's when we can really start doing what I think is the more interesting stuff, which is unlocking the potential of socionics. We need to form enough of a bridging enough of a common understanding for us to define things in a consistent way and then measure things in a consistent way so we have some sort of empirical backing and then we can start helping people we can start having do the things which aren't just ivory tower you know your activity can be interpreted just like black sensing you are centralizing mm -hmm. the idea in yes in one in one variant uh while black intuition tends quite the opposite it is an advocate for the majority of 
diversity and every diversity every version is okay and let it be more and more versions so in this moment i can interpret interpret that as black sensing in your activity in a very specific theoretical way but nevertheless it is, it is in the, the theoretical way now if you had in psychosophy an extra letter for theory and you put me theory first then maybe that could that could make set that could make sense in your model because then I'd be you know an SLE but behaving in a more theoretical field or domain. So, or maybe logic does that already. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on psychosophy. Maybe. I think I yeah. don't include any variant until I'm sure. So anything mm. happen. There are philosophers who are SLE. I talked. Uh, I wrote you in Facebook. Slavoj Žižek. He's quite. Yeah. Famous. He's a philosopher and he's SLE. I I always thought for Slavo Žižek, I think he's either an ILE or an ILE. <laughs> so, there. You are the same, ILE. <laughs> and I think Boris Johnson, another one who you type SLE, I think is perhaps more of an ILE. I'm not sure about Boris Johnson. I'm sure uh, only about Slavo Žižek. Okay, no, fair enough. No, that, that, that's fair. That makes sense. I... Yeah, if I, I I would have said that there are where I'd analyze what I do admit, I do agree, I'm more I'm getting more things done than your stereotypical ILE. I would say that. I am moving forward in a certain direction. But I the way I interpret it is that I see so as having so much potential. And I think to really unlock that potential to take things into all those different areas and things then diversifying lots of different areas you have to sort of shove it enough to get to the point where that can happen so i don't want it to be dead i don't want social science to be some sort of fear which is never really explored properly by people in the west for instance people don't know about it over here it's not known it's not understood people aren't doing tests people aren't trying things and and, and unlocking that i want that to happen those ex the possibilities want to explore and I feel that to do that, I really need to get things going to have some ambition to actually get it into this more public sphere. And I think if I'm just discussing the ideas all the time, I won't be able to realize those possibilities. So I think it, I can make sense of it in my own understanding of my hierarchy motivations. I would also would say that in terms of intelligence, I'd say I'm probably one of the more intelligent ILEs around just because I'm probably one of the more intelligent people around and so I think that as a result I'm more able to gauge what would be more weaker areas to use them enough in the pursuit of what I think is important a lot of people say I'm quite developed like in an aogram someone would type me as a seven who's integrated to five and the idea for that is that although I would be a seven I sort of managed to develop and grow enough I managed to learn and develop enough for understanding what seems to work for me or what doesn't work for me to getting what, what i where i want to go to actually integrate into these other sorts of areas and i think as a result i can be showing perhaps more black sensation i think i could be showing quite a lot more black logic which is why i think a lot of people may have thought lie for me um i, I was one of people but if people thought i was jack london for instance and even in white ethics I feel that I've managed to learn for some of the same mistakes as someone like Albert Einstein. Einstein, his relationships were a mess. He married the wrong person. It was a very unhappy one marriage. And he managed to find someone who was far better, uh, well, better for him later, his cousin, and still had all the extramarital affairs. And I thought I should learn from that by making sure I find someone who I believe to be my dual and someone who I can actually be happy with and not have a roving eye for the rest of my life. So that's what I'm trying to make work. And I've managed to make at least one relationship really work and count for me and be sort of really close to her and dedicate a lot of myself to her. And again, that's also, the, um, it's not the stereotype of the ILE going around, you know, like Boris Johnson, he's, on, he's had his um, third, he's basically starting up his third family now. He's had a child today, which is congratulations to him, but it's the typical pattern of an introverted ethics vulnerable type having a string of different relationships, different marriages. And I think I got to get going soon. Um, but yes, does, does that all make sense as well, Tibor? Yes, but Volner, uh, you know about Boris Johnson, if even uh, 
suppose that he might be SLE. That does not contradict mm. vulnerable uh, white mm. ethics. But there is another point that mm. shall be said, I think, that good choice in marriage does not guarantee that this or that person has strong or weak ethics. There is no st uh, straight connections because I know many uh, cases when ethical types made the wrong choice. So Shonix mm. and Sophie can help, but they are, cannot guarantee anything in this life. <laughs> They're just simplifying some choice. Mm. Something okay. like that. So yeah. I think we should finish on that. Yes. Tim, were you about to say something? I don't want to interrupt you. I, I would like to thank you for the conversation. It was really interesting. It is a great challenge for me to talk about socionics in my lame English. So thank you for your attention. Timur, thank you so much for appearing on here. I know like, being subjected to lots of pertinent questions is not exactly the most um, enjoyable experience for many people. And I just thank you for you know having this, this the strength of character, having that courage to, to to appear on here today and be subjected to me as it were but also sharing your knowledge so people can learn people can also understand your perspective better as well understand what modern social science is why it does the things that it does and get that sort of understanding hopefully build some more empathy so weird things what it is based on and so on yes <laughs> um so yes, Timo, thank you so much. And I wish you a, a lovely rest of your evening. I know it's quite late for you now. It's yeah, probably yeah, relatively late, probably, probably 11 o'clock, something like that. So have a lovely night. Good night to you. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.